So recently I did a review of Hyorka and I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was a very good slice of life anime. I thought it was interesting. I really liked the characters and it was sort of just a chill, relaxed experience with a nice sort of mystery twist. So I don't have any problem with this anime at all, apart from maybe the ending. Now, it's interesting. I had a sort of change of mind in terms of what I thought about the ending, but we'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, let's get straight into what I thought about the ending of your craft. Just sort of refresh your memory, uh, just in case you don't know. Of course, they baited us for a long time that there was going to be some sort of romance. Oriki was clearly physically attracted to Chitanda at the very least. You know, he was looking at her modelling photos at the high school festival. If you saw the OVA at the swimming pool, you know that he was checking her out. He was clearly physically attracted to her. And also, he was beginning to sort of change his mentality. If you remember at the beginning, he had this very strict motto. If it doesn't have to be done, then I won't do it. If it does have to be done, then make it quick. So he was never going to change outside of that formula, apart from Chitanda, who kind of lets him explore maybe a more lighter side to life and a more curious side uh, to his existence. So I think that it's very much implied that Oroki had feelings for Jatanda. Now, I would say probably less so the other way around, but again, Jatanda was, at the very least, again, had a lot of respect for Oroki because, for example, she constantly asked him for help regarding the mysteries. She obviously thinks he's very clever because he is very intelligent, he's very good at solving mysteries, and I feel like she just generally has a lot of respect for him. And I think, you know, in the way that she likes to invade his personal space and all that, it's very heavily implied that she also has feelings for him as well, beyond just friends. And that's great. And as the series was going on, I was thinking, well, I'm really looking forward for these two to get together. You know, I was shipping them, all of that, you know, all the stuff that most anime fans go through. And at the end, it just didn't happen. It, we were so close, so damn close yet so far. If you remember in the last episode, Oroki and Chitandra are walking home after he solves the final mystery and Oroki basically says to her, well, you know, I'm I'm thinking actually maybe I'd like to work with you. I'll, I'll, I'll go outside of my sort of comfort zone and I want to spend a lot of time with you and basically almost confess his love and then you realise, no, it was just in his head. He didn't say that and in fact, he kind of bottled it. Well, I don't know if he necessarily bottled it, but he decided not to go along that route and just to sort of stay as friends. And they sort of just walk off into the sunset and that's that, they remain as friends. And well, if I'm being honest, as that scene ended, I was kind of, you know, in anguish. I was kind of frustrated that we had kind of been baited and that we were so close and yet so far and I really did want them to get together. You know, I wouldn't have minded so much if they hadn't have sort of baited us, but I thought I got my hopes up so much. I really liked Oroki, and I said this in my review, I really liked Oroki, I thought he was funny and a relatable character. Chitanda is a fan favourite, she's really, really well liked, she's very, very sweet, and the, the fact that it was sort of baited that they could become one, but then don't, it was a little bit frustrating. And I was a little bit frustrated for a while, but the interesting thing is actually, the more I've thought about it, the less frustrated I've been. And actually, I quite admire the decision made by the writers. Hyorka is a mystery slice of life anime, and it is not afraid of that. It is not gonna shy away from that fact. Hyorka isn't a romance, or certainly the first series, if you think there are gonna be future series, the first series is not a romance. And there might be hints of romantic elements sort of near the end, but at the forefront, it is a mystery, a slice of life, just hanging out with four friends at the Classic Lit Club. And you know what? I kind of admire that. I think that a lot of anime, particularly, you know, high school slice of life anime, it always ends up kind of being the same. The characters confess their feelings for each other after being stupid and shy for so long or whatever, and it always kind of turns out to be a romance. And I kind of like the fact that Hyorka kind of breaks the mould, he thinks we're not going to go down the path that all other slice of life anime goes down, we're not necessarily going to give the fans what they want quite yet, and actually we're going to go down our own path of solving mysteries and, and all of that. And I thought, you know what, I can kind of respect that. Although I was a little bit frustrated that maybe we had been baited into it, I feel like, well, you know what, it's a mystery and and hey, maybe something quite fitting, the fact that we kind of don't know about where Oroki and Chitandra are gonna end up, and the sort of ambiguity about that kind of buys into the whole theme of mystery anyway. Their kind of relationship and their feelings for each other is kind of a mystery as well, and as curious as Chitandra is, and as good at problem solving as Oroki is, 
maybe the one thing they can't quite work out is what the other person is thinking. And I think that's quite an interesting concept. So I'm kind of buying into that more than actually the sort of generic path that it could have gone down. What, in a way, I was kind of a little bit more frustrated though, actually, was Maika and Fukabe's relationship. Now, first of all, I think that Maika and Fukabe actually in reality are much better suited to each other than Oroki and Chitanda. Oroki and Chitanda are very much different from each other. You know, Chitanda is incredibly curious. Her catchphrase is, Watashi wa kiri narimasu. Oroki is the complete opposite. He is an energy conservationist. Now, sometimes, yeah, opposites do attract, and I can kind of buy into that notion, but I feel like in reality, probably Chitanda might get on Oroki's nerves in the long run because she does a bit during the series anyway. So, you know, imagine if they actually got together. I think she would maybe be a little bit too much for him to deal with. But actually, Mike and Fukabe are really quite similar in many ways. Um, they're not exactly similar, but I think that there's a lot more potential chemistry between those two than Oroki and Chitanda, which made me even more a little bit frustrated that they didn't end up together either. And again, that was kind of baited, not as much, but it was kind of baited that those two had feelings for each other. Then it was openly espoused that at the very least, Maika had feelings for Fukabe because she revealed it a year before and he declined her. Then he declines her again, but then reveals to Oroki that he does have feelings for Maika, but has declined her twice in a row for some reason. And she's giving you chocolate, man. Okay, what's not to like? My point is, I guess, I didn't fully understand Fukabe's reasoning for declining Maika because I feel like she's perfectly well suited to him. I think that he was attracted to her, but he seemed to, he, he did explain this to Oroki why he re rejected Maika two years in a row, but it didn't, it didn't satisfy me, to be honest, and I didn't think it made any sense, and I thought he was being stupid, much like Oroki thought the exact same as well, and much like Oroki was getting frustrated with Fukabe at the end, I was kind of thinking the same. I was thinking, no, Fukabe, you're just being an idiot, all right? Just get, just get with Maika. And I feel like I can kind of understand more in a way why Oroki wouldn't get with Chitanda because he has a sort of chronic fear of breaking out of this mold that he's created for himself. He has a chronic fear of you know, going out and being energetic and living a happy, light life like everyone else does. But with Fukabe, yeah, he's got the whole thing about him being a database and all that, but he hasn't got the same sort of constructs that, o uh, that sorry, I nearly said Okabe, that's Steins Gate, that Oroki has. So it just didn't make a huge amount of sense to me. And I feel like not only was one relationship kind of left on an ambiguous note between Oroki and Jatanda, but a second one was as well. So it's even more un unanswered questions. And I felt like that, like that one was a little bit more frustrating. I also felt bad for Maika because she had laid her feelings out properly on the line twice and Fukabe had not given her a proper response. In fact, he had gone to the extent where he was incredibly cowardly and stole the chocolate so that he didn't have to actually talk to Maika about it. And I didn't like Fukabe's cowardice and I didn't like the fact that Maika now, you know, that was made, what, in 2012, she still hasn't got an answer from Fukabe all these years later and she put her feelings out on the line and has been kind of screwed over in return. At least with Chitanda and Oroki, neither of them put their feelings out on the line so there wasn't too much hurt going on, but Maika kind of gets screwed over quite a few times in the anime and I thought that was a little bit of a shame just to leave it like that. I, I do quite like the hypocrisy of Oroki and it shows sort of like what the human nature is about. You know, Oroki was getting annoyed at Fukabe that he wasn't willing to take the leap regarding Maika, but then does exactly the same to Chitanda. So in a way, it does kind of make sense that they're both kind of similar in the sense that they're not willing to take that risk uh, with the girl, whereas, whereas the girls are more likely to take the risk with the guy. And that kind of made me appreciate the fact that Oroki didn't go for it at the end because maybe he was just being a little bit hypocritical and maybe what Fukabe had said was sort of weighing in the back of his mind. So it's funny, I am in some ways frustrated and in some ways I quite like the ending as well. Anyway, I've been ranting uh, you know, for, for way too long now, I'm going to stop. But I hope you enjoyed, I'm going to be making more videos like this and more reviews of various other anime as well. So, hope you enjoyed, hope you didn't find this too rambling and I'll see you around.